Caddis Maximus here. This is just a quick video while my research is fresh on my mind about the external Torx six point star fasteners. This is a bit of an explanation about them and some tips and tricks when, when working with them. Now these of course use these funny shaped sockets, these external Torx sockets, just like the internal Torx that are seen on uh, many items these days, particularly on power tools. These are just an external version. And these are really more of a modernization of fasteners as they've come along. Uh, of course, all you know, common hex fasteners. And then there tend to be machine grade fasteners. These are very common on bicycles, but just all sorts of machinery and equipment are using socket head cap screws. There are, of course, Torx versions of these. And then the more modern evolution, if we start from what the earliest fasteners are, which are uh, actually were four point and then move to six point, Socket head cap screws, and then of course external torques. The quirk of external torques is if we look on the top of the fastener, it has six lines, which is kind of, even though this is a metric fastener, it's kind of a throwback to uh, the six lines that are used on high grade fractional fasteners or imperial fasteners. And I'm not exactly sure why they do that versus just stamping a number like that or like they have traditionally on socket head cap screws. Now many hex fasteners will come in variety of strengths and lots of them are lower strengths or medium strength like these sevens uh, on automobiles, uh, particularly, you know, uh, foreign, uh, Japanese, Korean, etc. They'll stamp the relative strength of the fastener so it'll be, you know, threes, fours, sevens, tens, elevens, etc. Where pretty much all socket head cap screws are going to be either 10 or 12. They're going to be very high grade fasteners. And that's going to be the same with external torques. So anything that has this type of head is going to be a high strength fastener. There is no external torques that are weak or that are uh, low grade. They also make studs which have this shape in the end of the stud to make it easier to work with the studs. And some small engines, more modern uh, equipment with small engines, you're actually starting to see these like Hondas. I believe it's Hondas. So these fasteners are seen anywhere from brakes on Ford Thunderbirds to hydraulic pumps and hydraulic systems to many uh, particularly German automobiles. There's two reasons for this fastener. One, it allows you to use a stronger drive tool, essentially a stronger drive socket for something that has the same exact head size for the shank. So all three of these bolts have eight or metric and they have eight millimeter shanks on them. But this uses a 12 millimeter socket this uses a six millimeter hex uh, driver, just like one of these here, as we can see. And then the external Torx actually uses what's known as an E10, although that doesn't correlate to internal Torx sizing or even hex or in a pinch using hex based tooling or drive tools to operate with them. And so the whole deal with this is that for the same head size of bolt, like a socket head cap screw, these external torques tend to be the very same height, maybe just a touch taller, and they are the, the same diameter. They'll fit down into the same kind of bores and tight spaces. But in this case, instead of driving it with this tool, which has a limited amount of uh, traction, also if there's a bunch of crud in here, you won't be able to get the tool fully seated until you clean it out, and that can be an issue. You're driving it with something like this. Now this socket has just a lot more steel involved with this socket in the deep, uh, I'll call it fluting, or the deep lobes for the external torques. Just a lot more material. It allows you to apply a lot more torque than what you can for the same size fastener using, in this instance, a 6 millimeter hex. This is just a lot stronger. So that's one of the reasons they use it. The other reason is when you're using hex fasteners, either like this, external and particularly internal is that many times the drive tools during manufacturing or even working on them by hand uh, people will know that sometimes the hex gets stuck in the fastener that's a particular issue in manufacturing because if the tooling gets stuck in the fastener it can either pull the part out of the fixture pull the socket off the tooling it just interrupts manufacturing it's a big issue uh, and so what these in mass manufacturing say automobile manufacturing or making of hydraulic pumps these external torques both allow you to have just a ton of traction uh, a bunch of of grip the way these fasteners although these are cheap this icon i did want to point out they should have a very deep chamfer and many of these harbor freights uh, don't where they really should have a deep chamfer like that and we'll just go on a tangent there real fast when they don't have a deep enough uh, chamfer they don't quite fully seat all the way on the fastener these fasteners tend to have very uh, uh, these sloped 
little ridges down there at the, the root of each of the lobes there, just to add a little bit of extra strength. So when the sockets aren't made correctly and don't have a deep chamfer, they kind of wobble around a little bit more and they just don't offer full engagement. Or these types of sockets should have a very deep chamfer so when you're using them on the fastener, they seat all the way down and just give you a little bit better purchase. But back to what I was originally talking about, the deal with these fasteners is the fact that they don't want to jam up when they're being driven by machine tools. And if you're putting a bunch of torque on them, the sockets uh, and drive tools just don't want to get stuck on them. And that actually is a huge advantage. And it's one of the main reasons that these fasteners are seen in a lot of uh, you know automobiles and various other things is just because of that, because of the ease of use of manufacturing. Also, if you're working with smaller fasteners, internal torques because of their stra uh, straight walls those bits sometimes won't engage properly unless you have proper uh, really good alignment where the deep chamfer kind of on the end of the e-torx fastener here as well as the chamfer on the drive tools themselves meaning that machines can come in they don't have to be perfectly aligned and they can just easily get on the fastener you know a machine can just come in get on the faster drive it in and then pull it off. And so that's really the main points about the external torques. And then some of the tips and tricks is the sizing is a little bit odd. The cross section or across, you would might say the equivalent flats is just a little bit larger or almost the equivalent to the actual shank. So this happens to be an eight millimeter shank. And with fluted tools, there are some hacks. Like if you don't have the right size e-torque socket, or maybe you only have a set of long ones or deep wells and you need some short wells in a pinch you do run the risk of possibly stripping the fastener or of course damaging your tools it's not recommended with 12 points but nonetheless this is an eight millimeter box wrench and it uh or combination wrench and it actually fits right over those lobes and so uh some people are commenting about that and that is a good tip it's also a good tip to know that you can use fluted six-point sockets, and it actually requires a fluted six-point socket, surprisingly enough, just because there's a little bit of extra space in the fluting, because the flaps across here are actually a little bit bigger than the eight millimeter. You can't quite get the open end of this wrench on there, although you can get it most of the way on there, and you can even turn these, or at least run them out with an open end wrench too, which is surprising. But with the six-point uh, sockets, they happen to ride right into those flutes. So what this ends up turning it into is kind of like maybe a little weaker e-torque socket. So also if you're in a pinch, get your six point socket and you will have a high likelihood of being able to remove it. Now, of course, you know, if you do, you may strip the fastener, but that's less likely when you're using a six point socket because of course the wall thickness on e-torque sockets are very thick. They're made for high torque. So really you're running more of a likelihood of actually just splitting your socket when using a regular six point. But there is a good thing of note. Now, if you say on a regular hex fastener, you strip it out, you're really in a weird, bad situation. You gotta use special extractor sockets, etc. An advantage of an e-torx, well, if you, it's rare that you would actually strip out an e-torx with the proper socket. But if you did happen to accidentally strip it out with a six point, so using a six point socket, you're not totally dead in the water because you could still go get a actual e-torx fastener and there would be enough of the lobes left to actually be able to remove it with the proper socket so it's kind of nice that way you can say well i'm going to go ahead and try the six points and then if it doesn't work out for me i'll go dig up some uh, real sockets and to speak of that sizing issue we also have another uh, socket this is a non-fluted an old craftsman here and we can see that the fastener just it kind of kind of goes in but it really gets jammed and doesn't seat very well even though there is a deep chamfer it's just surprising that the tiny bit of extra clearance that fluted or flank drive sockets provide actually will allow them to go and this will be with all sorts of different size uh, e-torx fasteners as you'll be able to kind of cheat and use six point sockets on them so i did want to point that out and it's actually pretty awesome it makes them just a little bit easier to work with and hopefully that will help some people and just give people a bit of uh, more information about this type of fastener and how it's kind of seems strange, but once you learn a little bit more about it, you find that it's actually a really good type of fastener. The external torques is actually better than the internal torques. And basically you're getting machine grade fasteners that you can use heavier duty, stronger tooling with as compared to their traditional counterparts, the socket head cap screw. And of course these exist over the, uh, uh, hex fasteners because of course this is can go into any space where just the head will fit 
or on a hex fastener we can see that the head on a socket head cap screw or of course the e-torx fastener here is going to fit within just this diameter where this hex screw wherever it has or bolt goes it needs to have extra clearance around it in order to be able to get the socket or excuse me be able to get a socket on it and here's a perfect example that both of these are eight millimeter shank bolts just the, the big difference is external torques versus traditional external hex this is a 12 millimeter bolt we got to use a big old 12 12 millimeter socket isn't a big old socket but when you consider that you can take this bolt out and replace it with this bolt in the washer and then all of a sudden you go from using a socket this size to being able to use a socket this size i mean this will fit inside the 12 millimeter the whole socket does way smaller for being able to use a fastener that's the same shank diameter and strength uh, really e-torques are pretty cool anyway i just wanted to make a video kind of explaining all about uh, external torques fasteners and how once learning about them i actually uh, have a much more respect for them anyway i really appreciate everybody watching and commenting and i do my best to get back to as many comments as i can and if you haven't subscribed to the caddis maximus channel please do until next time caddis maximus out